Well, good morning. It is great to see you guys. You know, one of the hard things about changing things is people who are used to doing certain things are like, I, I don't know what to do if I'm not working. Uh, but, but it also makes us, helps us appreciate all the people who serve. And so I appreciate all the folks, the praise team, uh, Rodney, who's here, who helps, shares in the service, and uh, Bob and Mary, who do the greeting and the welcome and all the stuff that happens. The only thing we, and we don't have children's ministry this morning, we've got uh, nursery taking place, but that's it. And so it's just amazing to me when you don't have the screens on, when you don't have all the lights on, when, when everything's just kind of chilled out how different it feels. Um, but it also helps you to appreciate all that we've been given. So I hope that you do that and you appreciate the folks. So would you just say thank you to all the people who help every week and let them know you appreciate them. So this is the tiniest illustration I think I've ever used. I'm not sure I've ever shared anything smaller than this. So I'm pretty confident that you can't see it. And Watson, you guys are just trying to compete now with Danielle's son last night. Last night, Danielle's son, in the middle of service, broke. I'm not sure what happened, but he went from crying to screaming. It was so exciting. And, and people came up to me later and said, oh, Eric, I'm so sorry. That was distracting. I said, I, I wasn't the one crying. I was fine. But... Um, Anyway, so this is a really neat little thing. So Jenna was in Austria and went to the Christmas market. And while she was there, she said, Dad, I thought of you, and I bought a baby Jesus. So this is a little baby Jesus in a manger. It's very cute. And it made it all the way home without being broken by TSA or anybody else. And, um, but I don't know where to put it. I'm afraid it'll get broken somewhere. So it kind of, I keep it in the package and I have villages. I set up villages every year. So I put it in there with my villages. I don't know what to do with it. I'm afraid I'll break it. But it's a great reminder, um, you know, of my daughter traveling and thinking of us. You know, that's what you, you understand when your kids give you something. It's like, oh, you thought of me while you were there. Um, today I'm wearing my Irish socks for my other daughter. Uh, they have sheep on them, if you didn't know. That's... Uh, <laughs> But, you know, when she was in Ireland, she thought of me. So it's just those neat little things. So here's the thing about Christmas. When we think about Christmas, we think of Jesus in the manger. But I don't want you, this is what I want you to do this year. I don't want you to stop at the manger. I want you to recognize that not only did God send Jesus to be in a manger, the, re, the whole point was to go to the cross. And the reason that we have an empty cross and not a full cross is because we understand that Jesus died and rose again. He's not on the cross. He's in heaven. That was not the end of the story either. He's in heaven eternal, and that's what he did for us because he loves us. And so today, if you have your notes in your bulletin, you'll see the notes are there today, and it talks about why we're doing unplugged services. Um, but I'm going to talk today about how God loves us. Number one is God so loves that he gave. And here's what it says in John 3, 16 and 17. You've probably heard at least 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. So this word belief is a weird word for us because we tend to think of belief like just when you think of something and you like believe, like if I said, do you believe in Abraham Lincoln? And you'd be like, yes, but do you believe in Abraham Lincoln? I don't know what you mean by that. Because we, our word belief can mean all different things. This word in the original language for belief literally meant trust. And so trust is what we do with this chair and the whole idea of God loving the world so that when we trust him, and so what does that mean? It says, when we surrender to him. Now, I can learn about chairs, I can study chairs, I can know the dynamics of chairs, but there comes this point where you have to 
trust the chair. Most of you probably sat down today and hopefully you didn't feel like you had to check the chair, but I guarantee if you had been in church last week and somebody broke a chair that you would test your chair before you got in it, right? Because you wouldn't be sure. Trust is about saying to Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to rest in you. So here's the question for us. God so loves that he gave Jesus. Are you trusting in him today? Now, obviously, that's a sign of surrender to Jesus. That's what it means to be a Christian, is to surrender to him. But the truth is, for all of us as believers, if we're honest, there's times and things that we go through in life that there's moments that we don't trust him. There's moments that we focus on worry, and we focus on frustration, and we focus on other things. And so the question today is, can you trust him? You know, sometimes what I do is I just have to say, God, I, I, I haven't been but I'm going to trust you. And, and whether or not it's something silly, like you're late somewhere and you think you're going to drive fast enough to get there in reverse time because you have a DeLorean or something, right? There's times when you're driving and you catch every light and you have to say, you know what, God? I give up. And by the way, sometimes that's the best thing you can do is to say, I give up. I trust you. God, you're going to have to walk me through this. Sometimes that can be when you look at the bills. Sometimes it can be when you look at the medical records. Sometimes it can be when you look at your life and you think, well, this isn't what I expected, but God, I trust you. Number two, so God so loved that he gave. Number two is God so loved that he showed. And I love 1 John 4. It says this, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So there was a guy uh, during the Civil War times uh, who was a tightrope walker from France. His name was um, Blondin, I think is how you pronounced it. And uh, he, uh, would, he was very known uh, where the rainbow bridge is now at Niagara. He would actually... Uh, walk across that. He did that several times, and he would do different things. He would carry somebody on his back. He would carry rocks, and his most famous thing was he would carry a wheelbarrow and, and walk around with the wheelbarrow full of rocks or whatever he put in there, and so one day he had walked across it about three times, and the crowd cheered and went crazy, and there was a reporter there, and and everybody cheered, and the great blonde, and he said, oh, do you believe in me? And they, and, uh, and, uh, the reporter was extra loud and said, I believe in you. He goes, okay, get in the wheelbarrow. And the reporter said, no way. And, and when we understand that God in, at Christmas entrusted himself to us, which all of us know we did not deserve, right? All of us know we didn't deserve it. And what does he ask from us? He asks that we now entrust ourselves to him. That's what Christmas means, this whole idea that he loves, so he showed. How did he show it? By making himself vulnerable, by making himself a baby. That's why this time of year, celebrating Christmas is such a big deal to so many of us. Number three, God so loved he gave, God so loved he showed, and then finally, number three, God so loves that we should love. And 1 John 4, 11 is another great passage. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love God one another. Now let me tell you something really cool about this word ought. This word ought here is the idea in the Greek that you're owed something. How many of you have ever seen White Christmas, the movie White Christmas? You've seen it, right? And so in there is, uh, I can't remember the, it's Bing Crosby and who's the other guy? Is it Danny Kay? It's not Danny Kay. No, not Fred Astaire. White Christmas, White Christmas. It is Danny Kay. Okay, good. I had that right. I, I'm so rarely right that I doubt myself when I'm correct. So in that movie, if you've seen it, Danny Kay actually uh, uh, keeps Bing Crosby from being killed. A wall falls, and Danny Kay throws him out of the way. And in doing that, part of the wall hits Danny Kay and hurts his arm. And so Danny Kay basically manipulates Bing Crosby and says, you know, uh, uh, I got a song I want you to look at, and I want to be a part of the show, essentially. And Bing Crosby says, well, I don't know. And, and Danny Kaye would just look at him and go like this. <laughs> By the way, if you pay attention, he actually shakes his hand with the hand that supposedly is broken, but that's another story. But anyway, he rubs the arm. And all through the movie, as they go through the movie, he doesn't, Bing Crosby says, I don't want to do that. And Danny Kaye would go, 
And it's like, oh, I guess I ought to do that because of what you did for me. This verse is saying that to us. Don't you realize what God did for you? And because he loved you, we ought to love other people. Now, Jesus gave us two commands, love God and love people. What's funny is we say, oh, we love God. But the hard part is loving people, especially when they're unlovable. So when you get to the point that you realize that person is unlovable, by the way, you don't have to like somebody to love them. Did you know that? You don't have to let somebody abuse you in order to love them. You don't have to allow them to hurt you in order to love them. But you have to recognize what Jesus did on the cross and say, you know what, I'm going to love them anyway. That's what this verse says. We ought to love one another. Why? Because he loved us. This Christmas, I don't want you to stop at the manger. I want you to go all the way to the cross. And even further, to recognize that the same Jesus that came as a baby not only died and rose again, but he's at the right hand of God interceding for you. So if you're struggling this time of year, say to him, God, I need help. God, I need wisdom. God, I need comfort. God, I need strength. And I pray you would do that this Christmas. We're going to close in prayer, and then we have a very special song this morning for our offering. And uh, would you join me as we pray? Father, thank you for this morning. I thank you for these moments together. Lord, I thank you for this quiet service that reminds us, Father, of the stillness and the silent first night. Lord, I pray as we um, understand what you did for us, that we wouldn't just stop at the manger, but we would understand that you came so that we could know you. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here or watching online that doesn't know you, that today would be the day they surrender to you. Thank you for this time together, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our ushers are coming.